What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where today I actually made two impulse buys and uh, we're gonna get a little carried away with at least one of them. I just purchased this 1987 Chevrolet Monte Carlo SS from an auction. This car has been parked for over 20 years. I was told it's been more like 25 years. It's a one owner car. That's right, one owner. I have all of the documentation from the sale, brand new. The original owner's name, which is the same name that is on the title today. Uh, this is an interesting story and kind of a sad one, but I think we're gonna make it a happy one before this whole series is over. So this car had been parked and everybody's gonna wanna know why. Why did a car like this sit for over 20 years? The woman that purchased it brand new ended up paralyzed. She did not want to get rid of the car and she held on to it all this time. It has been sitting in a garage this entire time. Well, after 20 some years, the car had to go. So the lady and her son, I'm not going to give away names or anything like that. I, I don't think that's a good idea, but the, the lady and her son decided to let the car go. They did some work to it. They got it running. They got it driving. I don't think it's actually roadworthy at this point. They did enough to get it running and driving and then they sent it to auction and they are going to be following my entire series on this car. So they're watching and if you want people to know who you are, drop a comment down in there and say, hey, this is me. This was my car and, uh, you know, tell everybody anything that you feel you want to about the car. Because obviously I didn't own it for the last 20 some years, so I don't have the full history on this vehicle. What I can tell you is this car is stock. I believe it has 107,000 miles on the odometer because there is some paperwork that came with it, which we'll show later. The odometer is showing 07672. So on the paperwork, it shows like 105,000 miles, so the odometer has rolled. So she's got a little bit of miles. It's had one repaint in its lifetime, and obviously they did it right. It's got the right stripe kit. It's the right color. This is probably the most desirable color for this car. The only thing that's missing that a lot of you are going to notice is T-tops. Some people like T-tops, and some people don't. Personally, I think T-tops cause more trouble. They're, they're more harm than good. They leak, they creak, they rattle. Uh, personally, I prefer no T-tops. <laughs> That's just me. But in case you're a T-top type of person, don't worry. I also bought, just yesterday, a 1987 Buick Grand National. <laughs> yeah, a, a real, not a fake, a real Grand National to keep this car company. So I've got two G bodies. The Grand National should be here, hopefully, by next weekend. I'm hopeful that I can have a video of this car with the Grand National next weekend. And uh, this video, we're gonna load it up. This is where the uh, truck dropped it off. They were supposed to bring it out to AR headquarters, but they decided not to. Um, they told me I needed to come get the car out here or I guess my car was gonna be taken. They gave me a $100 discount, so I had to go grab the trailer. This will also be the first time I tow a car with my new 2023 Ram 1500 e-torque. So there's a lot going on in this video. You can see the car, it looks beautiful, original wheels. I mean, you wanna talk about an original car, take a look at this interior. Absolutely gorgeous interior. Same thing back here. I know the sun's kind of you know, and the headliner, other than this, the headliner actually looks good. It's complete, it's intact. This is a really nice looking car. The door panels, like I said, it sat in the garage. It's got manual locks, manual windows, uh, manual mirrors, and you've got the, uh, the awesome sports gauges on this. I, I actually, I love these. The car is not running, um, but <laughs> I'm a little upset, but the, tow company, or the transport company that brought this car, even factory radio, um, the company that brought this car to me had it sitting here idling for 40 minutes. Just idling. I was very upset about that. So the car is hot. I have not driven it. Um, and I'm not going to drive it until we get it down to AAR headquarters. You can see all the spider webs and stuff still in here. They tried to clean it up, but I mean, there's still 
a long way to go. It does have cruise control. It's got the 115 mile an hour speedometer. It has rear defrost, it has air conditioning, and a tape deck. There's a few little tidbits in there. Um, we can also take a quick peek in the trunk of this car. Now here's some, here's some news that some of you are gonna like and some of you are going to absolutely hate me for. And I understand uh, both sides, believe me. Here's the trunk. Looks like a piece of trim that may have fallen off. So that's nice. There's a tad bit of rust, but I mean, nothing that looks, nothing that looks bad, guys. You can expect a little bit of rust here and there for some of these old cars. This spare tire, I don't know if it's ever been on the ground. It has not. It's still got all the riding on it. Wow. Here's your, uh, your RPO codes, which probably don't come out very well on video, but I have wanted one of these cars for a very long time, and I've wanted a Grand National even more. I never thought I'd be able to afford a Grand National, so I bought this, and I, I, I already put some plans in motion for this car when a Grand National popped up for $22,000, and I couldn't pass it up. You do not pass up a Grand National with low miles, clean, for $22,000, you don't do it. So I had already purchased this car and I've already got plans in motion for it. And now I have a Grand National. So it was not expected, it was not planned. It's just the way it happened. So we're gonna continue with this car the way I, I, I want to. And, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. You can see how dirty all of this is. This is from sitting for many, many years. It's pretty filthy under there as well. You know, I do give them props, they cleaned it up but there's all these little crevices that are so hard to get to. And I'm gonna show you another one, um, the hood. Boy, it's, uh, and I can't believe they had the car just sitting here idling this entire time. I, I, I'm genuinely upset about that. Look at all of the moss buildup or mildew, whatever it is. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's sat. And again, you're gonna find a little bit of rust here and there. Um, it's not structural. The, the, everything is nice and solid on it, and of course we'll get it on the lift. This engine is a 5.0, which is like, yeah, that's that. that it, it's honestly kind of sad that it's such a great car. It's a very sporty-looking, masculine car, and you're left with 180 horsepower under the hood from a 5-liter V8. You would think General Motors could have at least dropped a 350 into it, but no. They did not. This is what we're stuck with. So it looks like they put a new battery in it. I was told that they ended up putting new calipers on the front and new rotors. When I went to try to get it moved around where I could fit it on the trailer here, I ended up realizing that it doesn't seem like it's got brakes. Maybe they're good enough to move it around, but probably not good enough to be like going out and daily driving it. So. There's your story on the car, a one owner. How rare is that? Now let me tell you the part you guys are gonna be really upset about. I have intentions of ripping out everything under here. I want all of this gone. The transmission we're going to rip out as well. We're going to be replacing all of this with a 383 Stroker, brand new, hopefully from Blueprint Engines. I'm in negotiations with them right now. We'll see how that goes, but that is the goal, is to put a 450 horsepower carbureted 383 stroker. I want to retain the factory air conditioning, and if possible, I'd like to try to retain the cruise control and everything as well. I want to go with a uh, HEI distributor setup, obviously headers, different wheels and tires. I mean, these are, you know, they look decent, but I think we could do something a little bit better with the wheels and tires as well. I've already secured a sponsorship for a stage three transmission from Monster Transmissions. They are going to be shipping us out a transmission with a, I believe it's a 2800 stall converter, uh, stage three capable of handling 500 plus horsepower. So that is already taken care of. We just need to locate an engine. Now before you get too upset with me, not to worry. I have no intentions of taking the motor and transmission and tossing them out. I understand there's some people that would want that with the car and they might want it original. So I will hold on to the motor and the transmission and this car, I plan to build it for Power Tour 2024. And if all goes well, 
we can take this on Power Tour 2024, and we can take the Grand National on Power Tour 2024, and we can have both cars side by side making the Power Tour together. And how awesome a car that has sat for over 20 years, being able to get on the road, sound fresh with a healthy 450 horsepower cruising down the interstate next to its brother or sister, a Grand National. So that's the plan. This is the car and I got it for, God, it was like $11,100. You guys will tell me whether that was a good deal or not. I, I think it was. I think it was a good deal. Some of you are gonna say it was a horrible deal. Some of you are gonna say, it was a great deal. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how this car drives. It was sold on a red light. So let's fire it up. We get some lights, check engine, choke. Remember, this is carbureted even in 1987. Uh, I thought it was going to crank right over. There it is. Let's reset. Can I reset the trip? I'd love to reset this trip. No, <laughs> the trip does not reset. Let's try out the signals. Yeah, other signal. Yep, headlights. I have no idea where the brights are on this, but I'm assuming the headlights are working. Obviously, console shift. Your, uh, well, your old school Delco radio, man. Um, let's try out this radio. Okay, speakers are uh, a little blown. <laughs> That's all right. It sounds healthy. The brakes, actually it feels like it kind of has brakes. I don't know. The brakes is something we're going to have to address. Sounds like the exhaust is stock. I'm pretty sure it still has the factory catalytic converter. That exhaust pipe is pushed in a little bit. You can see some of the paint flaking and the, the stickers kind of peeling off back here. I mean, it's been sitting for a long time. So depending on how far we want to go with this car, and I'm going to tell you right now, the engine alone is $6,000. The transmission is $3,000. So you're looking at almost $10,000 um, getting put into the powertrain of this car. There's probably another $1,300, $1,400 for wheels and tires. There's probably some suspension work that's going to need to be done. And uh, well, that's it. I wish we could see the date on this oil change sticker. Let's try out the horn. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna pump up the brakes. Let's take it just real quick. Let's just drive it around. We're safe in this parking lot. This is our official first drive. You know, if you guys show enough interest in this car and you wanna see it brought back to life, I'm willing to buy the stripe kit for it. I'm willing to send it to get a fresh paint job, full detail, everything. Actually, the, well, ooh, <laughs> the brakes are definitely a little questionable. Oh, it's pretty smooth. Uh, the brakes seem, okay, so they, they seem to grab pretty good, but as soon as you start getting toward the bottom of your stop, like the end of your stop, that's when the brakes quit. <laughs> they seem to be, yeah, just a, just a little sketchy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get it on the trailer. I think the brakes are good enough. We can take it on an official test drive. We'll see after 25 years if we can take it on a 10 mile run once we get it down to AAR headquarters. So let me get this thing on the trailer and let's take it down to the shop where we can get it on the lift, look underneath it, take it for an official test drive and see what we think. One other thing I just realized, it has a tilt wheel. How nice is that? <laughs> this is great. Let's see if we can get out. Um, I accidentally hit the lock button. It also needs some tinted windows. Be very gentle. Yes, we clear it. The e-brake is on, and believe it or not, the e-brake works. Uh-oh. Well. Come on. Great, the key doesn't come out. I got the keys. It's it's a little tricky. I've got the e-brake on. Everything seems to be good. So I think we are golden. We're just gonna check to make sure it's lined up relatively straight. Perfect. 
actually that's that's really good the trailer unfortunately is actually a little little on the high side definitely a little on the high side it'll be good enough to get down to the shop i've got a new hitch unfortunately it's also i think oh it's upside down but it's made to be that way okay yeah so i've got the, this is my new hitch this is my first time using it and obviously i've got it up just a tad bit too high the car is good i'm going to strap it down and this is going to be our first haul with the 23 ram 1500 i'm interested to see how it's going to do on its maiden voyage hauling a vehicle well it's a brand new day today is friday and this video comes out saturday so that's tomorrow so we got a lot to get done obviously we're down here at aar headquarters and here's all my other yeah projects <laughs> And now we just added another one to the list. I just got off the phone with Transport Company and they said my Grand National will actually be here either Saturday or Sunday. So next weekend, hopefully next Saturday, will be the video of the 1987 Buick Grand National that, uh, that I kind of stole. So stay tuned for that. Let's see how this thing wants to run today. I've got my books with me, and right there on the front, you can see somebody wrote 105.852. We'll go and we'll look at these later. Before we take this on a test drive, I want to drag this thing into the shop, and I just want to go through the fluids. I want to check the carburetor, make sure we're not leaking gasoline anywhere, and I want to try to get the power steering working. I'll put some power steering fluid in it, but it obviously has a leak, and I want to know where that leak is so that I can get the uh, appropriate part or parts to fix it. And I want to check the air pressure in the tire. So give it a couple pumps of the gas. No way, that easy. It idles a little high when you first start it. Go ahead and roll this window down. This car has no air conditioning, no functioning air conditioning currently. So we'll let it cool off in here a little bit. Let's see how quickly this, uh, this thing will kick down. Uh, a little bit not not all the way but it's getting there that should be enough to get it off the trailer let's close the door does this horn work we need to clean the contacts under here i bet yeah see it was working yesterday doesn't work at all today you got that tilt wheel which i really really like windshield wipers they work honestly it's it's kind of impressive how much still works on this car. This is one of the reasons that I love old cars. This, in my opinion, is one of the last vehicles that you could still work on yourself. Prior to fuel injection, it's still carbureted. It's, it's simple. Everything is simple to work on when it comes to a car like this. And it's one of the very last ones. Yeah, those brakes, man. I, I need to check the, the brake fluid. <laughs> As well, I don't think there's back there's back brakes on this. If you look at the oil pressure, sitting at almost 60 psi, all the gauges work, which is pretty incredible. Ooh. Uh oh. Well, and and here's the other thing. Once you put it in park, the key you've got to see what I mean. You got to figure it out. You know, it's it's been parked a long time, guys. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on, old girl. I know you've been sitting a long time, but we're gonna stretch your legs today. That's what that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stretch your legs. Alright. There we go. Now let's see. Ooh, she wants. She wants to go. That's what it is. She's ready to move, man. Oh, you know what? I left the e-brake. I'm sitting there with the e-brake on. Oh, that's much better. That's. Oh, don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Come on. Oh, it kicked up some gravel. All right. Let's roll this bad boy into the shop real quick. And let's see what we can do about getting this thing on a test drive. How about that old GM buzzer? <laughs> Before we go anywhere, I want to try to put this light back up. The screws are right there, and I and, and the light actually holds 
the headliner of. Like the headliner is perfect in this. It's not sagging, but the cardboard is sagging a little bit because this light is not held in place. And of course, we're gonna go look through some of this paperwork that we got with the car and see what we can find in there. I'll tell you something, one of the things, hey Roxy, what's up sweetheart? One of the things I've always kind of hated about these is how high the front end sits of the air. Uh, in my opinion, it looks kind of ridiculous. The back end too, these cars sit way, way up in the air. It just doesn't look right. It does not look right at all, but I don't think I'll change that. That's just, that's just part of the character of this car, I guess, at this point. So we're gonna jump into this. The first thing I wanna do is get a light under the hood so we can see. And we're gonna take a look around and see what's what. All right, we got a light under the hood, so we'll be able to look around. But first, here's all the paperwork that I got with the car. We have our original 87 Monte Carlo user's manual. We have our 87 new car warranty guide. We have our dealer new vehicle certification for emission controls. We have a pre-delivery inspection sheet right here. How about that with the correct bit VIN number and everything from Banks Chevrolet. We have our maintenance schedule. This I'm not gonna show you, it's like a registration. I don't wanna give out uh, the original owner's name or address or anything if I can help it. Then we have Banks Chevrolet Cadillac in Concord, New Hampshire. This is dated 616 of 1987. And the purchase price of this vehicle, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, $14,008. $14,008. I won this vehicle for $11,000. You want to talk about a vehicle that has not really depreciated? This is it right here. I mean, you got almost all your money back. How often can you say that happens? And then, of course, uh, right here is the original, um, basically, GMAC financing uh, paperwork. 11% interest in 1986. The total price of the car, amount financed, was $11,008. Total payments would be $14,360 with interest and in, in, in everything. $3,000 was paid down 60 months at $239.34 was the payment for this car. So there's, there's everything that came with the car. Now let's roll that out of the way. And, uh, and let's come over here and take a look at this. First thing I want to do is check the brakes. Did I say 84? I meant 1986. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's never a good sign. Oh, boy. Well, at least there's fluid in it. Right, it's, it's low, but at least there's fluid in it. I am really tempted to do a kind of a quick and dirty bleed on this brake system uh, before we really try to take it out on a ride. Um, man, yeah, I'm really tempted to just, I've got this tool somewhere up here that uh, hooks up to my air compressor and you just hook it up to the nipples on all four corners and, and, and suck all that out because that is pretty gnarly and it's also relatively low, which is very concerning. Also, the power steering is another issue. It's not the end of the world, um, but I'm not trying to damage anything. So where is, where is my power steering pump? I know it's hiding, there it is. It's hiding over here somewhere. This is interesting because you have a serpentine belt set up right here, but then you still use the old school V-belts. <laughs> back here for the power steering and the air conditioning unit that power steering reservoir was not thought of very well was it uh some chrome accents were added you can see that i'm curious if this is still the original engine because it's painted chevy orange you know i really don't know or did somebody maybe swap out a 350 um, it still has what looks like the original intake and carburetor and everything. Everything under here looks to be relatively original. So I'm going to bet it's probably the original 305, the 188 horsepower engine. Looks like somebody changed the oil. The oil is nice and clean. There's a lot of debris under here that will tell you if you didn't already know that this car had been sitting. Um, the engine compartment does not look like it was, it was power washed. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff under here. 
Maybe it was power wash. I just didn't get everything. Definitely some corrosion under here too. This is a New Hampshire car. So obviously that's something to be aware of. Trans fluid looks really nice. Whoever had this car for sure took care of it considering it has 107,000 miles on the odometer. I mean, these weren't exactly the most reliable vehicles and they definitely weren't fast thanks to emissions controls. Uh, but it's still a beautiful car and that's why that's why I really want to just gut all of this. I want to maintain the air conditioning. The air conditioning would be important for Power Tour. I want to maintain the AC, but I would love to just get rid of everything else. Just delete on all of this, all of this, you know, air injection junk. I'm sure it's got an air injection pump or maybe somebody removed it. Actually, I do not see the air injection pump. It's gone. <laughs> it's missing. Yeah, so somebody deleted the uh, the air pump. The uh, air injection pump is long gone, so that's a good thing. I don't know where all the hoses go. Hold on a minute. Where do all the hoses go? Because there's where it was. Yeah, they go to nothing. See, that's what I mean. We could really clean this up by, by just deleting so much of these emissions components, dropping a beautiful 383 in here. Uh, or if I can't get a 383, we can always, is this, this is out. It just drained out, like out of nowhere. This just ran completely dry. Oh no. Lovely. All right, I went ahead and filled it back up and we're just gonna keep our eye on it to see if it disappears again, because that shouldn't, that shouldn't happen. Um, this is another interesting thing. These valve covers, I am, somebody's definitely been in here. And that like silver color on the intake, that's not original. Surely that's not original. And look at all the crud down there. I mean, there, there's, there's lots of stuff. There's nasties all over down there. That looks like your old school Quadrajet. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with these. I cannot rebuild one of these to save my life. I've tried and I've never been very successful at it. So, uh, but you see how small the front barrels are compared to these ginormous back barrels. Take a look at this. I mean, these back barrels are huge. These things have a very unique sound. And that is uh, when you're just tootling around, they're, they're very efficient. They, they are very efficient on fuel. But when you open it up and those big old back two barrels open, man, you hear it. It's just like this, whoa, whoa. Oh, man. It's a beautiful sound. In my opinion, the carburetors are just a, a tad on the complicated side. So I'm looking around under here. I really don't see anything to be concerned about. My biggest concern was seeing if this carburetor after sitting for over 20 years was leaking fuel. I don't see any gasoline. The gas line is right there, runs into the front. There's a fuel filter in there. I don't see any fuel anywhere under here. Um, I do want to put some power steering fluid in it. I do, I'm going to go ahead and just quickly these brakes. We're not, we're not going to do that on camera. Um, We've got oil, trans fluid looks good. We've obviously got coolant. It looks like it's almost ready to go. I'm just gonna do a quick bleed. I checked the air in the tires. They were at 46 PSI. I dropped them down to 32 and a half. So here shortly, we should be ready to take it out on a preliminary test drive. That took a lot longer than I would have preferred, but uh, we've got a lot figured out now. Number one, the power steering. The power steering was pouring out of the low pressure power steering line, which I figured that's probably where it was coming from. And the reason for that was this is the original factory clamp. It's kind of rusty and uh, it had lost its torque or tension and uh, there was no way to adjust it. So I had to take that off in the process. I dumped power steering fluid all over myself and uh, made a pretty sizable mess under the car as well. And uh, then I focused on trying to get the brakes. Well, that didn't work out because, well, take a look back here and you'll see why. Yep, you know what that is? That is probably a broken metal line. I'm hoping it's the rubber line <laughs> that's blown, but it's probably a metal line. So there are no back brakes. I bled the front brakes. Jessica came out here and gave me a hand with it. So the front brakes should be working fine. Power steering is now working and it's not leaking. 
So I think, even though it's probably not the safest, I think it's safe enough that we can take it on a proper test drive. We're just gonna be, we're gonna be careful. Um, I deflated the tires, as I said earlier, they were up to about 46 PSI, they're down to 32, 32 and a half now. And I gotta give a big shout out to uh, this channel sponsor, Super Clean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I ran out of this floor absorbent quite a while ago and uh, I had made a considerable mess over here on the lift and I really needed to re-up on my floor absorbent. So they sent me a whole bunch more, which I'm gonna probably use most of to clean up the ginormous mess under here. So thank you to Super Clean. If you're interested, I'm telling you this right here, this stuff, my favorite. This floor absorbent is my favorite stuff ever. I'm gonna put a link down below to Amazon. You guys can get some for yourself. If you're uh, messy like me, why don't we take this thing out for a test drive? Should be its first proper drive in over 20 years. All right, here we go. We have the choke light and the service engine soon light. It fires right up. There's one other thing I'd like to add to this car and that is some of my B12 Chem Tool uh, fuel system cleaner. I think that would go a long way. Yeah, we have brakes. We have brakes and we have power steering, which is really nice. Boy, those front brakes are way better, way better than they were. I wonder if I should trust the gas gauge or if I should bring some fuel with us. All right, I put some of my B12 Kim tool into the tank. I actually put two cans in there and we're gonna hope that the gas gauge is correct because it says that it's almost full. Oil pressure, now that it's warming up nicely, is still around, I don't know, 45, 48 PSI. The light, I tried to put it back, but I can't find the holes for the screws. I don't know. I, yeah, I tried and it's not working. So I'm going to forego that and we're fine. We're going to take it on a test drive. That's all I want. All I want. And what that noise is, hear it? Not a clue, man. I don't know. I, I don't know what that noise is. Let me get this situated here. There we go. All right. I'm going to close my garage door. I've got a tag on the car. And we're on our way. Oh man, that's nice. Power steering is so smooth. All right, off we go. Let me, uh, I accidentally opened, <laughs> I opened one of my doors and I meant to, I meant to close it. That's the, the right door, there we go. Now we can get down the road and see how this thing does. First drive guys. Boy, that, oh, it's got good oil pressure. Really good oil pressure. I don't know what that daggum buzzing noise is. It's really annoying. The shifts. Cuts up a little bit. It's quiet. It's really quiet. Wow, the steering is straight. It's relatively smooth. We're going 45. What do you think the chances are that the cruise control works? <laughs> We're gonna try it out when we get on the uh, highway speeds here in just a second. I mean, 45 miles an hour, she's cruising smooth as silk. You can feel it cutting out some. For sure, it's it's definitely got a lot of stuff to work through on the fuel system. All right, speed limit goes up to 65. So here we go. We're already there. Wow. No kidding. And let's try the cruise control. No, no luck. No cruise control. She floats down the road, man. That's impressive. Take a look at the gauges, guys. We're going 65. Volts are good. Oil pressure is up to almost 60. Coolant temp is good. Wow. What a gem. It's like a time capsule, guys. 
107,000 miles and the thing actually rides this good down the road. I had to roll up the windows, guys. It was too loud with those windows down. I am, I'm really impressed with this car. I'm actually really impressed with the powertrain that's in it more than anything. Um, the car really does run, drive, and ride very smooth. I mean, I'm cruising 65 miles an hour. This car has been sitting for over 20 years. And here it is taking its first 10 mile ride. This is really impressive. It's a very smooth, relatively quiet, aside from a little bit of wind noise, and comfortable ride. It doesn't have a whole lot of power, but I mean, they never did. It's like 185, 188 horsepower from the 5.0 liter V8. But it's got plenty of get up and go. I mean, it's got no problem holding its own on the highway. And it seems like the fuel system is already clearing up. This would be an absolute wonderful cruiser for the Hot Rod Power Tour 2024. And that is the plan. The plan is to swap out the powertrain with something a little more beefy, something that we can have a little more fun in, a different exhaust, a different transmission cross member so we can run true duels. Obviously, we want headers, different wheels and tires, air conditioning, and then Hot Rod Power Tour 2024. And if we're lucky, we can do the Power Tour not only in this Monte Carlo SS and drive it at least 2,500 miles, but if we could possibly bring its big brother with it, the 87 Grand National, that would be great. That way, all of you could join us, those of you that are gonna be in the area of Power Tour 2024. You could come out, you could see the cars, you could see us in person, and we would all have a great time. The front brakes, I know that we probably should be driving with back brakes too, but that's just out of the equation for now. Right now, the front brakes are doing a great job holding this car, stopping it. Shifts are crisp. It's just, this is a great car. I'm, I'm really surprised that after being parked for as long as this thing has been parked, that it just jumped right back on the road like this, like, like it was driven yesterday. To me, that's absolutely crazy. I actually passed my five mile mark. We're now over five miles. Um, so I'm gonna enjoy the drive a little bit and then I'll turn around, we'll get back to the house. Kick down works, by the way. I can hit the, hit the gas and man, she just, no problem getting up this big hill. We're doing 75 right now, guys. 75 miles an hour. And let's see, do we have a, what, 25, 27, maybe 2,700 RPM at 75 miles an hour. Not bad. Remember, this is a 204R transmission, so it is an overdrive. It's a four-speed transmission. Like I said, I want to enjoy this drive just a little bit more. We'll turn around and get back to the house. Well, isn't that the way it goes? I just got back. I shut it off, and I thought, let's see how it starts up now that it's warm. And nothing. But the good news is the key comes out now. It seems to be getting better as we use it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Let's pop the hood. I think it's safe to assume that the, uh, the classic side post GM battery has come disconnected or loose or something to that effect. Let's pop this hood, see if there's any smoke, nothing. There's absolutely nothing under here. No kidding. I don't smell anything funny. There's no pressure on the cooling system. That's not good. Probably a bad, uh, probably a worn out radiator cap would be my guess. It's nice and warm, but it's not hot. Nothing's bubbling or gurgling. Wow. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed, guys. This thing is in, this thing is in really good shape. It needs a, a really good cleaning. It could definitely handle a little bit more power. But uh, aside from that, ooh, yeah, I hear the radiator cap leaking. Hear it sucking air. Oh, great. 
Yeah, the radiator cap is leaking, so it's pushing all of the fluid out. That's nice. I promise you it's not overheating. Oh, the negative cable is not even on. <laughs> so I should probably address that real quick. We'll try to fire it up again. This is definitely a good project car. I mean, it's something that runs and drives. You could literally drive it and enjoy it while you wrench on it. And that is a perfect project car. Something that you can actually use and work on at your leisure. I think the first thing I'm gonna order for this is a new radiator cap. That's very important. It's just sitting here sucking air and puking coolant out. So we'll definitely take care of that. As far as anything with ignition, plugs, wires, oil change, there's really no point in doing any of that if we're gonna be taking all of this out and replacing it anyway. So for now, I'm not gonna be focusing on anything relating to the engine or the transmission or the ignition or the carburetor. There's just no point in messing with any of that stuff. What I think we should probably focus on is a new master cylinder just to be, just to be safe, uh, new brake hoses for the front, the new brake hose for the rear, and of course, we'll have to get it on the air, uh, in the air probably in the next video. And uh, take a look and see exactly why we don't have back brakes. The wheels and tires, the, it actually rides great. I'm really surprised. I thought this thing was going to be flat spotted and, and really ride horribly. It didn't. I don't know how that is, but it rides absolutely smooth as butter. So I'm still considering what I want to do. There's no dry rotting, no cracking on the tires at all, like none. These are obviously old tires. They're, uh, they're Michelin Sport EP-X. Um, they're older. The wheels are definitely pitted and stuff. This car came from New Hampshire. So, you know, there is going to be some corrosion here and there with it. And I'm just thinking it would be easier. I could, for 1300 bucks. I can get a really nice set of wheels with new tires that'll go great on this car and look really, really nice. And I think that's probably the way I'm going to go with it. Obviously, we're going to need an exhaust at some point as well. But we are not to that point yet. Could we consider giving it a respray? You know, making sure every little ding and dent is out of it and having it painted? That's definitely a possibility. Fire right up. Definitely a possibility. I'm not opposed to the idea. But again, we'll see what happens as time goes on. I did kick on the heat and the air, and they both work. I mean, the air conditioning does not turn on, but it does switch between hot and cold like it's supposed to. The blower motor works on all speeds. The only problem is it blows out of the defroster and the floor, regardless of where you put it. That's a very common old school GM thing. They've been doing this forever. There is a vacuum line that runs to a set of other vacuum lines, and that vacuum line runs under the hood, most likely, it's broken. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just a tiny broken vacuum line. No big deal. It's sitting here idling, fully warmed up. Oil pressure is at 30 PSI. Fuel gauge is showing three quarters of a tank, so I do believe it's working. Temperature gauge obviously works. I'll tell you what I don't hear though. I don't hear the secondaries. Yeah, I don't hear the secondaries. You hear the secondaries on a car like this. All right, it's, it's whoom, whoom. Yeah, we don't have secondaries. So, start it up one more time. Listen to that. The idle quality, you know, but again, it's been parked for, it's been parked for over 20 years. The fact that it runs and you can turn on the radio, I think. Yeah, look. <laughs> Granted, you know, the speakers are blown, but I mean, you can turn on the radio and it works. The, you've got heat, you've got manual windows that function like they should. It just needs, it needs a little attention for a car that's been sitting for this long. And that's to be expected. And again, we didn't pay a high dollar amount for this vehicle, at least I don't think so. I got the car for like $11,100. So what do you think? Was it a good deal for a 107,000 mile, one owner, 1987 Monte Carlo SS? 
or do you think I overspent? Because nine times out of 10, you guys always say that I overpaid for it. I don't know, it's got a little damage. There's uh, definitely some work that needs down on the bumper. It looks like something bumped into it and cracked up the paint. The stripe up here got rubbed off by something. I don't know what happened there. So obviously the front bumper needs a little bit of attention. And there's a few spots around the body that need a little bit of work as well. But overall, I mean, especially for a northern car, a northeastern car, guys, this is not bad. Not bad at all. I think the worst issues are down here, as to be expected. There's a tiny bit of bubbling right there and right there. And a little bit over here by this light. And I think that's about the worst of it. There's a little bit more bubbling right there. That's it. And a little bit on this door. I didn't see that. Just a little bit on that door. I mean, I really, I got to put the camera right up to it or you wouldn't even see it. You know what I mean? So that tells me that it's not that bad. A little bit of paint chipping off, the stripes coming off a little bit back here too. A stripe kit for this is about 300 bucks, 250, $300 for the entire stripe kit. You know, you send it down, you get all of these rust bubbles sanded and you get all of this stuff repainted, new stripes put on. This thing would be a stunner, man. I mean, it already kind of is, and we haven't even cleaned it yet. It's totally filthy. This car is really, really filthy on the outside. It might clean up decent. Listen to that engine run. Definitely a slight miss at idle. Clears right up, though. Clears right up. So what I'm going to do now that it's been sitting here idling, let's back it up. And let's see if she's leaking anything, because, man, this thing was... This thing was leaking before. It was... Leaking power, steering fluid everywhere. I took a peek under it, and I didn't see any oil, any transmission fluid, any gear oil. And look at this, see what I mean? The key came right out. Fired right up again, yeah. She just needs to be used, guys. That's all she wants. And that weird noise, it's coming from the carburetor. Yeah, it's coming from the carburetor. I couldn't tell you what that is. So there is, this is where it was dripping coolant. I don't know what this is. Oh, don't tell me it's still leaking power steering fluid after all that I went through. Don't tell me it's leaking power steering fluid. Um, it doesn't look. Well, it's leaking coolant over there, but Definitely looks a little wet under. Oh, I bet I overfilled the power steering pump. I can't see anything leaking, guys. I don't see anything leaking at all. But it does look like it's a bit of a mess down there. I may have just overfilled the power steering pump and it just kind of, you know, bled itself out. That's my guess, because I cleaned up my mess before I was done. It was the low pressure line that was leaking. I'm looking at the low pressure line. There's nothing coming off of it now. It was just a loose clamp. We'll see, time will tell. So there it is, there it was. My one owner 87 Monte Carlo SS for 11,000 bucks. You guys tell me what you think. I already know there's gonna be a lot of people really upset that we're talking about pulling out the original engine. Maybe, I don't know, is that the original engine? I have no idea. I have no idea. I'd have to pull the alternator to see the pad to find out. And truthfully, I don't even care. If it's the original engine, great. If it's not, Great. I still think it'd be great to put a, three, a 383 stroker in it and a nice transmission with some headers and nice exhaust. I think the car deserves it, man. It's, it's a muscle car from the 80s. And let's face it, muscle cars in the 80s, they were like this, 180 some horsepower. The old Mustang GT would have stomped this. I think those old Mustangs were, what, 200? Maybe a little bit more for a Fox body back in like 87 or so? Maybe 215. I don't know, but I can guarantee you, a Fox body, a stock Fox body from back then, I would stomp this car all day long. It needs to be brought up to date. I know it takes away from their originality. Some people are gonna say it's gonna destroy the value, but like I said, I fully intend to hold on to the engine and transmission that came out of this. And if it comes time to send it down the road, you know, maybe I'll put the old powertrain back in it and sell it factory, or maybe I'll sell it with all of the other stuff. I can't tell you, and will I sell it? Probably, I sell everything. But then again, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll keep it because I'll have a Grand National to go along with it. Or maybe I'll sell it because I have a Grand National. <laughs> 
stay tuned guys you guys know how i do around here i can't help it i like to move cars get them in have fun get rid of them get something else but this one this one for sure is going to be a longer term project what i'd like you guys to do is drop your comments below and just tell me what you think of what i'm thinking of doing with it what are your thoughts on swapping out the powertrain what are your thoughts of getting the body done up and repainted with a new stripe kit just overall what do you think we should do with this car i'm going to get out of here but until next time i want you guys to stay safe out there and i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one